Yes, what do you mean by subject verb agreement? When I say you are students studying in ninth class. So here I've written a sentence. What do you mean by subject verb agreement in this? Yeah. So here we just mean that the subject that is you, it is in agreement with the verb. That is verb agrees with the subject and subject agrees with the verb. Okay, if this combination is not all right, if this is not in agreement, then the sentence cannot be formed correctly. All right. Most of the times we keep on talking about the tenses, verbs and all. But if the tenses are not in agreement with the subject, then we cannot frame a correct sentence. For a grammatically correct sentence, the subject should agree with the verb and the verb should agree with the subject. And what is subject before we proceed to the topic further? What's the subject? What is subject? Here it is you, but otherwise what is subject? Hmm? Yes, you're right, I guess. Speak up again. Subject is that part of the sentence about whom or about what we are talking. Okay, subject can be a person, subject can be a place, subject can be a thing also. Okay, subject is something about whom or about what we are talking in the sentence. So here I'm talking about you. So you are studying in ninth class. Okay, when I say, uh, train left the station at 5 a.m. What's the subject here? Train. train. I'm talking about train here. Okay, if I say rules must be followed. What's the subject here? Rules. rules. So the subject can be an idea also. Subject can be, if I say Honesty is the best policy. What I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about honesty. One thing more. Uh, does the subject, is subject always one word or two words? It can be a group of words. It can be a complete clause also. For example, <clears throat> right on, the people the people who work hard, the people who work hard, the people who work hard are always successful. Yeah, the people who work hard, again, comma are always successful. Now what's the subject? Successful. Here the subject is the people who work hard. This is complete subject. Because which people we are talking about? The ones who work hard. So the people who work hard, this is subject, are always successful. So he, this verb R is according to what? Verb. This is verb. Yeah. This verb is according to the people. The people. Here who work hard is parenthesis. Parenthesis, it is an adjective clause. In this sentence, the people who work hard are always successful. Here we have used the adjective clause. Basically, the sentence is the people are the people are always successful, but which people who, who work, work hard. hard? So here, if I remove who work hard, even then grammatically, the sentence can be correct. The people are 
the people are always successful but you might feel in uh, you might ask uh, which people a question is coming so we'll have to complete that subject but otherwise grammatically it was okay you people have done the clauses also we okay separately clauses are not in our syllabus but we can understand there are three kinds of the, if we talk about a sentence it is of two kinds a sentence can be simple for example people are always successful simple sentence there is only one finite verb people are successful one verb simple sentence but when i say people people are hard working and they become successful here i have written two sentences people are hard working one people are successful second sentence joined by and when two simple sentences are joined by and we call them compound sentence but when we say the people who are hard working are always successful so here i have used a clause inside why is it a clause why not a, a simple sentence because we don't start a sentence like who work hard who work hard needs one more sentence to complete itself you cannot write who work hard without the people are always successful it is dependent upon the main clause so this is subordinate clause this is subordinate and what kind of subordinate because it is the description of the people so it is an adjective clause okay something which answers who who is whom which that that happens to be a an adjective clause noun clause tells what to noun i know what your name is i know what your name is so what your name is a noun clause to i know clear this is the place where i went this is the place where i went yesterday so where i went yesterday is adverb clause adverb clause answers what when where how noun clause answers what and adjective clause answers who's whom which that okay okay so here right now your purpose is not to understand the clauses in detail but the meaning of clause is that in a sentence when it has got two parts one principal clause one subordinate clause then the verb here also agrees with the with the principal clause with the main subject of the clause and the subject of the clause is the people over here write down one more example these are the houses these are the houses these are the houses which i want uh, oblique wants these are the houses which i want oblique wants to purchase so what will come want or wants because this want is according to i so you'll have to see like which verb is is to be used for which kind of subject these are the houses here are is according to houses okay now let us see the rules step by step okay write down the first rule first happens to be the error of proximity what's the meaning of proximity nearness something which is near to it no something which is near to it for example the price of the apples price of the apples is or are very high so here the subject is what's the subject first you tell me this the complete subject subject is price of the apples this is subject and now the verb is or are is to be used according to the proximity means nearness 
so what many people do they say like because apples so they'll write blindly r so that happens to be the error of proximity you'll have to choose the subject which is the relevant over here we are talking about not apples we are talking about price price is very high so it will be is 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 the correct answer okay the price of this is very high if i say the prices of then r got it next example is the herd of cattle is or r grazing here Yes. So, what's the subject here? The herd of cattle. Yes, the herd of cattle is subject, and this is will be the correct answer. And it is not because of cattle, but because of herd. Although, according to cattle, also it could be is. Yes. Here you'll have to decide like what what is what is grazing. Who is grazing? herd of cattle is grazing it's just not about cattle from the word herd herd we come to know it is collective noun so basically you have to look at the main subject to determine like which verb would come there okay okay now next rule is number that's very simple rule you know this next rule about the subject verb agreement is number what's the rule singular subject will take singular verb and plural subject will take plural verb right right on this rule singular subject singular rule plural verb, subject okay for example they go to market they go to market or they goes to market hmm? they goes to market got up yeah. yes, go, 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 go. when we do this simple present tense and they go to market and they got up listen do you people know the answer okay ritika very good all of you listen to me when we do simple present tense what's the rule in the simple present tense we use first form of verb with what with first person pronoun with second person pronoun and with third person plurals with first person we use only v1 for example with i v and with you second person and with they we use only v1 but we use v1 plus s or es with third person singulars v1 plus s or es means for example goes and v1 only means go i go to market we go to market you go to market and they go to market but she goes to market he goes to market ritika goes to market what it But Ritika and Tanvin dash to market, go to market. Ritika and Tanvin will go to market, but only Ritika will. Ritika goes to market. Singular. The point is, where do we use s or es? With only third person singular, we use s or es. Otherwise, we don't use s or es anywhere else. It's a very simple rule, but I don't know many children get confused about it. With first person, that is with i v. second person that is you and with third person plural we use only v1 we don't use s or es what's a singular verb in present and definite tense singular verb is only v1 go sorry only v1 is a plural verb and we use it with the i v u they and goes is used only with he she 
it or any one name. Okay, so the sentence was, they go to market. What will be the answer? They go to market, not goes. Because they is plural, third person, and third person plural takes only V1. Okay. And if I say she is doing her work, will you be using is or are? Is, is, she is. So these things I don't need to tell you. I dash done my work. Yes, I have done my work. So I takes have. Where do we use has? Only with he, she, it, and singular. Third person, ah, third person singular ke saath we use only has. Otherwise, everywhere we use have. I have, you have, we have, they have. But only has is used with singular third person. That is he, she, it, or singular. He, she, it, or Chaitanya. Chaitanya has learned it. Okay. Now, next question statement is uh, person. One rule is regarding uh, subject verb agreement error of proximity. Like, don't just put the verb uh, considering like the noun near to it. You'll have to see, see like what's the proper subject. Then there is a rule regarding to the number. Singular subject, singular verb. Plural, plural subject, plural, plural verb. Okay. And uh, but in present and definite tense, you have to be very careful. Okay, then there is a rule of the person. This rule just now I talked about in the in this very case. First person, first person, second person, third person plurals take only V1 in present and definite tense. Otherwise, we use V1 plus S or ES in the third person singulars. Clear? So this rule is very simple. We have done this. Now the next rule is uncountable noun. Write down. Uncountable nouns. When the uncountable noun is a subject of the verb, when uncountable noun is a subject of the verb, we use singular verb. When an uncountable noun is a subject of the verb, we use Singular verb. If I say charity, begin or begins at home. So charity, Gur, Gurpal, give the answer. Uh, why? Yes, you are correct. You are right. So charity is an uncountable noun and it will be followed by a singular verb. So charity begins at home. Okay. Honesty commands or command? Command. Respect. So what will be the answer? Commands. So honesty commands respect. So the rule is when you have uh, uncountable noun as a subject, then it will be followed by a singular verb. Remember it. Now the next rule is singular and plural nouns. Singular and plural nouns. Same thing, singular noun will be followed by singular verb and plural noun will be followed by plural verb. The sun is shining or the sun are shining? Shining. The sun is shining or the sun shines. Nouns. The singular and plural nouns. So what's the explanation for this? Singular noun will be followed by singular verb and plural noun will be followed by plural verb. For example, the sun shines in the sky. Or when you say the sun shine in the sky? Shines. Or the sun is shining. Arshpreet, how are you? Hmm? So had full rest. Right? 
during online classes. Came very rarely. Now come regularly to school. Are you writing? Okay. Okay. Now the next one is one of plus plural noun. Now the next rule is about. I'm telling you, one of plus plural nouns. Ah, uh, rule. When you have a sentence with one of and plural nouns, then the verb will be. What kind of verb will be writing? Let me give you example. One of the students of this class dash phone. One of the one of the students of this class has phone or have phone. Yes. Has. Though there is students. Students, the word is students. Even then, we are using has. Yeah, we are talking about one student. One of the students. It means that one student has phone. Of all these students, one has phone. So who has? Tell me. Hmm. What of you are having? Laksh. Who says I have? Chitana, give your phone. Pride has. Give it to me. Take it after full break. Take it after full break. Yes, give it to me. Okay. Okay, next sentence is write for more of this kind. One of one of these books, one of these books, one of these books was or were mine. One of these books was or were mine. Uh, one of these books was mine. Whenever there is one, there will be verb in singular. But afterwards, one of these books or one of this book. Uh, one of is followed by a plural noun. Remember this also. It's not that keep on learning only that the verb should be singular. One thing is here: one of plus a plural noun. One of the boys is. Present in the class. Yeah. One of all those are ten boys. One. One of those ten boys is in the class. Which boys? I don't know. But I'm talking about some ten boys. Got it? So one of plus plural nouns equals to singular, singular verb. verb. Singular verb. It's a very important rule. When you people do the editing exercises, then you might get some mistake about plural nouns. One of the one of the boys or one of the boy. What's the correct answer? Boys. Okay. Okay. Now next sentence is next rule is I mean. Uh, very important long subject. We have done this kind earlier also. When there is a long subject with a clause uh, next and now next rule. When a clause or a long group of words is a subject, right? When a long subject. When a long group, long, when a long group of words or a clause is a subject, we have to be careful when we have a long subject. That is when there is a clause. We have to be careful to make the verb agree with the subject. For example, 
The chairs we got yesterday. Leave that. Leave that. Write the example. The chairs we got yesterday. Okay, give the correct answer. Give the answer. The chairs we got yesterday is very expensive or are very expensive? Ritika, what do you say? Hmm? The chairs we got yesterday is very expensive. Ritika, earlier you were saying yes. Now, why are you changing your answer? Are you Ritika's? Let her answer. Yes. Is. Why? Hmm? What makes you use is? What, what are you looking at to write is? Are you looking at yesterday? Are you looking at God? Or are you looking at me? Or are you looking at chairs? Or are you looking at the? What makes you write is? The, the is? Do we write a verb according to the deter, uh, determiner? Do we write a verb by looking at the determiner, the, is, the, a, or an? We use verb according to the subject. And subject happens to be a person, place, thing, or an idea. So what's that here? The chairs we got yesterday. Now, why are you using? What's the subject? Yes. yes. So yeah. subject is chairs. So we'll be using the chairs are very expensive. And what is we got yesterday? This is the description like the ones which we got yesterday. So this is adjective clause to chairs. Okay, so the chairs are very expensive. So try to find out like what's the uh, correct subject here. Your verb should be in accordance, accordance with the right subject. Got it? Write one more. The children. Along with their teacher. Teacher. The children along with the teacher are or is, is or are in the class. Give explanation. What's your answer? Is or are? Are. So he says are. So what are you looking at? What's the subject? Children. children. Here the subject is children, not along with the teacher. Along with the teacher is only a parenthesis. So the children are in the class, but they are along with the teacher. So this is secondary. The main thing is only children. Children are in the class. Suppose the sentence was the teacher along with her students dash in the class is then we would have looked at the teacher because subject is this along with whatever that is secondary. But the main is the teacher is there in the class. Clear? Okay, now write next rule. Introductory there. Write down. Introductory there. The verb has to agree with the real subject. The verb has to agree with the real subject that follows the introductory there. The verb has to agree with the real subject. Yeah, T-H-E-R-E. -E. The verb has to agree with the real subject. The verb has to agree with the real subject that follows the introductory there.
that follows the introductory there. For example, so what will you say? Is or are? So there are 50 students. So this R is not according to their. This R is according to 50 students. Especially this. Okay, but if I say Got it? So this happens to be a introductory there. Okay, we'll be doing some more exercises like this tomorrow.